Hi guys, it's Pat, and I'm back from Canada. Back from Con Bravo. Had a great time there. I was in like uh, four panels. I was in the uh, video game history panel. I was in the uh, video game collecting panel. I was in the RetroWare TV panel on Sunday morning. And then probably the highlight for me personally, I had fun at the other panels. I had fun with uh, you know, Billy and Jay, uh, Norm, gaming historian, uh, Rue, uh, and Sid Bolton, who is the biggest video game collector in Canada. They were cool. Uh, the RetroWare panel was cool. We lost for the first time in Smash Brothers, unfortunately, uh, because Rue underperformed as Ness, and I was stuck by myself two on one with like two lives left. So anyway, uh, besides all that, uh, 12, 12, um, 12 p.m. noon on Saturday, I was in the most frustrating uh, game show in the world panel. It was me. It was three sets of two people on three teams. Me teaming up with uh, Lewis, also known as Linkara, um, and then it was Doug Walker, a.k.a. Nostalgia Critic, with Rue, and then Justin, a.k.a. Juorio, with Mara Wilson, who I met, and she was very lovely. And Mara Wilson was the child actress who played Matilda, and she was, she was also a Mrs. Doubtfire. So that was a very cool panel, and hopefully that comes online within the next week so you guys can see all the fun with that. And it was actually the first time uh, I met Doug Walker at, at any of these conventions. Doug Walker and I never met each other, I'd never spoken before. And um, we have, I guess, the distinction of being the only two internet personalities that have done a crossover uh, with on an AVGN video. And obviously his fan base eclipses mine by a billion or so. But uh, it was funny because we're walking along, or I'm walking along, in the vendor area. By the way, I'm still exhausted. But I'll get to that in a moment, what happened with my trip. Uh, we're walking in the vendor area, or I am, and then I see Doug Walker there. And I walk past him, I go, oh, it's Doug. I go, hey, Doug, how's it going? And he goes, he goes, hey! We just look at each other. Not that I'm expecting him to recognize me, but, uh, but that, this is the moment where if he was going to recognize me, it would have been this. So about eight awkward seconds passed where he's like, we're looking at each other. Because, you know, I, I'm not, I never approach anyone as a fan because it's like I figure, you know, we're, we're both producers. We're both, you know, in the same sort of, you know, genre. We're, we're both, you know, you know, we're, we're both co like colleagues that don't know each other, basically. So we're looking at each other for eight seconds awkwardly. Finally, he's like, yeah, so, like expecting me to say something else. So I just go to him, uh, I'm Pat. He looks at me like, okay, that's cool, but doesn't say anything. Pat Contry. I worked with James Rolfe a couple times. Finally, something clicks and goes, oh yeah, Pat, oh, nice to meet you. And he goes, he goes, oh, I didn't recognize the hair, it was the hair. The hair is different. I didn't recognize because of the hair. So <laughs> I guess I guess I do have a different look with the hair a lot longer uh, than what people are used to. So we met, it was really cool, he came back to the vendor booth we were at, the RetroWare guys, and we talked for, you know, five minutes, and it was very busy, uh, but no, very cool to finally meet Doug Walker, very cool. Uh, again, we ne we've never been at the same pa uh, convention before, I don't think he's ever been at a MAGFest I've been at, and this is my first time at Con Bravo, and I don't really go to the, uh, I guess he probably is invited to animate conventions as well, and I usually don't go to this. So it was cool meeting Doug Walker. Uh, other highlights. Um, hanging out with, you know, Jared is great. Hanging out with uh, Brent Foss uh, or Brent uh, was cool. I finally get to hang out with more than five minutes at one of these events and just sort of, sort of uh, shoot the shit. That was fun. Unfortunately, we didn't get to perform uh, our song together because I, I don't think they had the AV set up uh, at his concert for it. So there was no screen to do the sing-along. Oh, well. Maybe uh, maybe in a couple months in October at my next convention. But anyway, that aside, um, nice construction going on outside. Anyway, um, let me show you what I got at Con Bravo. Oh, by the way, uh, the Canadians, I know it's, it's a stereotype, but they are extremely nice people. Extremely nice. I mean, like, so much that it, it's almost annoying to a Jersey guy how nice they are. Uh, Shane Lewis, uh, awesome guy. Love the guy. Uh, he, he does the re show on RetroWare TV. Um, and nicest guy, just wanted to go gr grab food for us. I'm like, Shane, you're not my server. I don't want you grabbing food and, and water for me all the time. And then would always apologize for <laughs> apologize for anything that would go wrong that wasn't even his fault. Like, you know, like like our vendor uh, table was moved, and he's apologizing. And just like, Shane, it's like, dude, if you apologize one more time to me, I'm going to throw you through a window. <laughs> you know, like, that's basically what it came down to. But Shane, super awesome guy. Great to finally meet him. He's a, he's a rising star. Check out his channel. I'm going to put it below there. He's on RetroWare. And you might see him again in the future a lot more on another sort of business venture that's going to be coming out in the future I can't really talk about. 
That aside, Shane was cool. Billy and Jay were there. They were cool. Justin was cool. Rue, eh, it's Rue. I finally met uh, Daniel, uh, the Commodore, who's the other half of Clan of the Grey Wolf with Rue. Daniel, nicest guy in the world. Um, really cool. Wish I could work more with him, you know, or just talk to him at all. I probably will. I'll bother him, text him, whatever. That's really personal. Not sure why I'm telling you that. But anyway, really cool guy. We both have the same opinion about Rue being crazy. So that's really good to finally connect with someone like that, that both hate Rue equally. And on that aside, uh, the flight back was hell. Um, un unfortunately, uh, where the panel, uh, where this convention was, Cam Bravo, was in Hamilton, Ontario, which is about a 30 to 40 minute drive from the Toronto airport. Which would be fine in theory, except that going both ways there shouldn't be traffic. And so I left two and a half hours from my flight going home. Two and a half hours. And didn't make my flight. There was bumper to bumper traffic on the highway because of an accident. So um, they put me on another flight. They were nice enough, uh, United, to book me on an Air Canada flight instead. Uh, so there'd be plenty of time still between my flight to Chicago and my connecting flight back to San Diego. Unfortunately, the, the flight they put me on, the, the replacement flight, was delayed five hours. So I was faced with this nice uh, quandary, like, oh, I'm going to sleep in the airport. What's going to happen? So finally, I ended up in Chicago at about 11 at night. And my connecting flight was like three hours before, so I'm not making that obviously. So, but Air Canada, super nice Air Canada. Super nice people. Maybe it's the Canadian thing again. No problem. Reboot my flight on an airline. No hassle through another airline. Got me the hotel for a night. Got me a food voucher. No questions asked. Or like, we're just going to do it. We're not going to see say if it's United's fault or ours. We don't care. We're just going to do it for you. Awesome job. Thank you so much, Air Canada. I wish I could fly you more often. Unlike fucking American Airlines who screwed me on my trip to SGC by giving my my seat away that I paid for even though I wasn't late those sons of bitches American Airlines anyway um so that aside um my first time ever in a hotel overnight for a flight because I missed a connection that that was fine I got back to sunny San Diego uh really tired as you can see I'm tired um it's wearing me down, these trips. It, just, it, it really is. And it's keeping me from doing stuff like finish editing, editing my uh, fifth anniversary video. Um, I've had four four of these conventions in two months. So think about that. That's every other weekend, literally, I've had uh, an event. Uh, E3. Then right after that, you have SGC. And then right after two weeks, two weeks later, three weeks later, you have Comic-Con. Then right week after Comic-Con, you have Con Bravo. I am spent. It takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you in terms of meeting the fans, who I love. They're great. I love meeting the fans, signing stuff, pictures. That's fine. But it's it's just running around to the panels, doing interviews. It's just like it's nonstop uh, at the table, at the restaurant table for most of the time. It's hard to have fun at these conventions. There's very little downtime, unfortunately. Again, I don't want to complain about the situation, but it just, it just wears you down. So it's hard to get back to producing the videos in a timely fashion. You're probably going to say, oh, you're wasting time filming this. Yeah, but this, this requires no editing. I'll film this and edit this, you know, in a half hour and it'll be fine. Um, so, okay, enough of that. What did I get on my now becoming tradition non-boxing post-convention videos? This is what I got. I did manage to get some cool stuff. Uh, most of the vendors, now, people are telling me Canadian video game prices are more than U.S. That is true, I guess, because they figure it's harder to come by, they can charge more. That is true. So, overall, the convention prices, combined with Canadian prices, made it a little unreasonable for stuff. For example, uh, Battletoads was being sold for, like, 35 bucks. That's, like, a $15 game, $20 game. I sold an extra I had for, like, 15 bucks. That's some cool, good news, at least, is that if the retroware guys, like me, Billy and Jay, whoever, if we bring games to these conventions to sell, we're going to undercut... All these other guys by like 30-40% and just move them and get them out. And everyone get, everyone wins. Everyone gets a good deal. So that's cool. So what did I get? What did I manage to get? Um, this was cool. There was, there was a, a nice lady that had a bunch of uh, Neo Geo Pocket Colors and Wonder Swans. Wonder Swans was a handheld that came out only in Japan. And this came out in the U.S., Neo Geo Pocket Color, but not in wide distribution. She had like all the different colors. And um, she had them all for like 40 bucks each. I figured the Wonder Swan, I'm never, I'm barely gonna be able to play this, but the Wonder Swan, I would never ever get around to playing, plus you never, can never find the games, games for it. So I just got, uh, I got a Neo Geo Pocket Color. She was asking 40 originally. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna come back on Sunday, I'm gonna lowball you a price, and then let's see what we can do. So Sunday comes and I offer 20 bucks, and she accepted. So that's a good deal. This is the second generation Neo Geo Pocket Color. They're a little bit smaller, the battery case is different, but it's the same thing. Powered on, works fine. <sighs> just have to replace the, uh, the internal battery for the memory functions and time and all that. Oh, hear that mic micro switch? 
Great. Uh, Ian loves it. My friend Ian calls it the uh, NG uh, PC because he's a hipster. But uh, the Neo Geo Pocket Color, I'm not to find games for this. So that was cool. 20 bucks. What else did I get? A couple of, uh, well, I got a bunch of uh, uh, games for the Dreamcast. A um, couple I got, these were $6 each. Uh, I have this on uh, PlayStation, so I'm not sure. But, well, maybe I'm going to go for a couple of Dreamcast set collection at one point. Maybe not. But uh, Resident Evil got for 6 bucks on the Dreamcast. And I got Dead or Alive 2 on the Dreamcast. I got, I got those right there. So that, that was great. Uh, what else did I get? For 25 bucks, uh, I got both of these. I got Street Fighter Alpha 2. And I got uh, Street Fighter 3 Double Impact. Whoa, that's a good deal. Because I think this one is almost worth 25 by itself. So really good prices. A guy, a guy uh, hooked us up uh, later in the event. Um, what else did I get? Um, this is a good deal uh, for these three. These are Sega Master System games, and I'm always on the fence about going for a complete Sega Master System set. And this is inching me towards wanting to do it. Uh, the first two are complete. Um, I got King's Quest. Yes, it came out in Master System. I got this one right here, complete. A game called Kensiden, which uh, is an action game uh, set in looks like uh, feudal Japan. Um, that's a really cool game, and that's hard to find. I got that. Uh, with the manual. And this one is just case and uh, game only. Uh, Galaxy Force, which is an uncommon Master System game. And it's a shooter. So I got all three of these for, uh, let's see, how much did I get these for? I think I got all three of these for a really good price. I think it was about uh, $35 for all three. So that's a really good deal. I haven't gotten a new Master System game in a while. Uh, I think I'm up to about 70 or 75 games. So that, that's, that's cool. I love the Master System. I should do a review of that. And finally, I got all three of these for $60. I got the box and manual for Super Mario All-Stars in pretty good shape. I got uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for Dreamcast, which I was looking for for a while. I have the, uh, the first one, but I was looking for this one. So it's good I got that. And then, last but not least, uh, Complete. Uh, the seal is still on it, but it's the seal is off. You can get at it. Everything's in here. Uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, the uh, the gold uh, hologram uh, collector's edition for $60 complete. So I'm really happy about that. I got all three. So that means I spent about, you know, let's see, 20 I spent about $150, $180 of my Canadian money. You know what's cool with Canadian money? Or not cool. It depends how you look at it. The paper, it's not even paper money. It's like plastic. It sheets of plastic. There's clear stuff in it. There's holograms all over it so you can't counterfeit it. And there's no single dollar bills. They use uh, just you know, basically gold gold dollars and then they have two dollar coins too so there so you go two dollar coins I, I didn't know that either it took me like a, a day and a half to get used to that so yeah con bravo cool event hopefully next year i'll make my return so i'm done with conventions for two months i'm tired i'm exhausted from them uh, i don't mind doing them or i like doing them but they're exhausting next one is portland retro gaming expo that is october i believe fifth and sixth in portland oregon uh, check that out. That's going to be cool. I'll probably do a separate announcement video later. So that's it. I'm tired, but I'm going to try to go to the gym and work out. Uh, work off some of that poutine I ate in Canada. Uh, again, Canada, thanks for having me. And I'll hopefully see you again. And guys, next video, knock on wood, is going to be part one of the fifth anniversary of Pat the NES Punk. I cannot wait to finish editing because I hate editing stuff as the plane goes overhead. You probably can't hear that, my external mic that badly. All right, guys. <laughs> I, uh, I'll see you later.